and turn to John 3.30. I want to read everything I want to read, and that way I don't have to go back to anything. And I want to read it just to prove what's in the Bible when I start preaching on it, and I just don't quote it, but you see it for yourself. Chapter 3, verse 30, if you're not there, just take notes. We must increase, but I must decrease. Let me say that again. We must increase, but I must decrease. You got it? Okay. We must increase, but I must decrease. Of course, this is John the Baptist speaking about Jesus. Matthew chapter 11. Just write this down in your notes, please. That way we can move quickly. Matthew 11, 11. Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has not arisen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet he who is yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and violence and inflicted by force. Now, Luke chapter two. Verse 41, and his parents he used to go to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he became 12, being Jesus, think about this, an adolescent Jesus. And when he became 12, they went up there according to the, to the custom of the feast, verse 43, and as they were returning, after spending the full number of days, the boy, let me say the boy, the boy, Jesus. It doesn't say the God, Jesus. It doesn't say the divinity of Jesus. It says the boy, Jesus, stayed behind in Jerusalem, and his parents were unaware of it. But supposed him to be in the caravan and went a day's journey and began looking for him among the relatives and acquaintances. And they did not find him. They returned to Jerusalem looking for him. Have you ever looked for anything in your life? Come on, have you ever looked for anything in your life? Something that is most precious to you, oftentimes in your life, can be the very thing that you lose sight of. Let me say it in just a moment. There's many times the most precious thing in your life is the very thing you lose sight of when you get distracted by everything else that's around you. Come on, Jesus, help me in this church this morning. See, this is what happens oftentimes in the church specifically because we are so bombarded by Western society. And I'm not against Western society. I'm proud to be an American. I'm not, if I could sing it, I would sing it. At least I know I'm pretty, you know? I, I'm proud to be American. But the reality is that we live in a Western society where we are bombarded by the cultural sewage that is spewed into our living rooms by TV every single day, but oftentimes certain things and people with our toxic relationships or even people that are just paying into your life to be a distraction concerning what God has authentically, really genuinely told you to do and to become, and we lose sight of the thing that's most precious to us. What is going on here is that when God entrusts the Mary and Joseph the most precious thing he has, period. There's nothing more precious God has. God creates the cosmos. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. On day four, God creates the sun. God creates the stars. He creates the galaxies. Everything you can see and you can't see, he creates the invisible realm, which means that which is of the quantum physical realm, the things that you cannot see going into electrons and protons and even going further into course, like going to the deep depths, the things of God and the mysteries that we cannot even comprehend. God makes it all. He makes angels. He makes seraphims. He makes cherubim. He makes the malachines. He makes every type of enjoy being that there ever is. And then he creates man in his image and in his likeness. And then in the fullness of time, Galatians 4, 4, his son is born from a virgin and his name is Jesus. The most precious thing that God has is now lost by the 
people that God gave that to take care of and throw it over. But how many preachers today have lost the anointing because they lost sight and they put their eyes on something other than what is really of a value to them? See, oftentimes we have Jesus, but then we lose him because we have run away or run ahead of him or want to do other things that doesn't pertain to what God has actually told us. Jesus, help me. I'm getting ahead of myself, but that's okay with I told you I'm not a point guy. Oftentimes, uh, we're going with the crowd and we're not following the crowd. We don't even care about the crowd anymore, as a matter of fact. Uh, we're ready for other things. Uh, there's so many things in our life. Uh, there's so much more important for us uh, than the power of God. Uh, we rather go this than have the anointing. We rather feast uh, than fast. Uh, we rather talk uh, than pray. We rather pray than pray. There's so much in this life uh, that weighs us down to the Bible says. That's the every prayer and the weight that was so easily beset. All of us run this race with our hearts. I know it's pushing up in here. We run this race with patience. Lay aside the weight. Lay aside the strain. Lay aside every single thing that can bring you out of your mindset. Have a perfect word back to you. But how do you lose sight of the most precious thing you could ever obtain? How do you lose sight of Jesus? Oh, yeah. How do you lose sight of the very one that you were entrusted to? He's the word of God made flesh. So you have to remember who was in the beginning. Once the word and the word, it was with God. And the word was it. You gotta remove this word? No, Jesus. You gotta replace this word. Woo! But here we are. We got a three day journey later that they finally find Jesus in the temple. Because they don't even know where he is. They're freaked out. They're panicking. Running, where is the woman that God told me I'm trusting you with my son? Remember when they were came to you? Remember when you had that dream in the middle of the night? Remember when the prophet said, This is this and this. But now you step back. On that side of the promise, we're going really well doing it. We're going to keep the faith that God sees. Well, I'm about to take this thing to Yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, I can get on something. I'm trying to get to where I need to go. Where I thought I'm going to preach, and I'm probably going to get there. But then a the revelation just popped up on the inside of me. And I'm wondering how in the world you lose the anointing. How can you hold the anointing? Who is he? His name is Jesus. Who is he? He's the Christ. He's the Messiah. He's the Messiah. Jesus is born. Where did you leave the presence of God? 
was seen. I thought he was with you. I thought he was with you. What he said to you, a pastor, so we're okay. And I got people coming up to me and say, you know what, the last pastor in my whole church, he did this and this and this. Jesus, don't have to wait a long time to get home. He was doing his father's business and you were doing your home business. Oh, God, I'm preaching this completely. Don't you know that Jesus is going to be about his father's business? So if you're not about his father's business, you're not about his business.
are the strength of us to I'm wondering where it is to be hot. They begin to search for him among the farmers and search for him among the people that were in the Mozilla place and the company, and they could not find the boy Jesus. Somebody said the boy Jesus. There are a lot of people today. Where did the boy go? He was here last Sunday for the boy down today. Where's the girl at? She was here last Sunday because she's down today. All right, because when the attack to the soul is really wind and wind and dust, because it's not something to sustain you. What's going on? We're being moved by emotionalism, honey. Can you not be moved by us? Yes! You do the real church is driving rods in the dirt and playing the church for the house that's going for you. Get me some sand from Jerusalem, the Sea of Galilee. I want to put in a bag and I'm going to bury it out the back of my church and believe God for the miraculous. That's the morning. And if I made anybody mad yet, I'm not as well. I mean, I mean we're going to have to lay foundations and get this thing right or we're just going to just. You know, I cannot believe that people who actually watch people on TV and send them money for a vial of tap water in the city of Delaware. I got some salt at home. And I got some tap water. I can make this salt water if you really want some. I will pray blessing of it. Let's play a spell on me. What's going on in the church when the boy, Jesus, has left the accountability that God has placed in his life because he feels he knows better than they know? We're getting quieter here. I need to get back to where I was. I've been down on some toes and we just got quiet. I couldn't get it any minute if I was passing out money. Boy, Jesus stayed behind. That's what happens when God starts moving. Oftentimes, we stay behind. We stay at a distance. We watch from afar because we're afraid to get too close. That was the problem with the children of Israel when they went to Mount Sinai and the glory of God came down upon the mountain. And as the glory descended upon the mountain, it was thunder. It was lightning. It was pitch black clouds. And the people said, Moses, you know what? We may go and hear that. Pastor, you fast 40 days, I ain't going near that. Pastor, if you pray for me, I ain't going near that. Pastor, you're going to have to just see what happens to me. I'm not going near that. And God is trying to wake some people up this morning to let you know that these signs shall follow those who believe in my name. In my name. So what happens after the process is we can see the calling with a commissioning. He's standing in this bishop's chair. He's standing in both of them. Now I'm standing in two offices at night. Commissioning, calling, and it's set apart. He's doing for purpose. That's not automatically made. I'm ready for you. I'm talking about it a little bit. That's just how it happens. If we are moving out of season, we are set up for specific attacks that we're not able to defend against. You know, I'm talking about demonic reprisal, forceful retaliation. See, what happens when you join the state fellowship is you get hit like hell. (laughs) 
understand is the key being to walking into who you are created design and call it to be is understanding what authentic genuine humility is. Humility is not saying, well, I'm just as beggar, this holy sinner saved by grace, and it's not thinking you're better than people. It's knowing who you are in Christ. So, and when you know who you are in Christ, I want you to begin to operate as Christ would operate. That is what he does do to you. WWJD, what heard of Jesus has done in this situation? When he made it to Iowa, when he raised it from the dead, when he prayed for him, when he let us fix it, when he prayed five minutes or two fish, when he let us fix it, when he let us fix it, now Jesus gave us first, which means we're corporate. We're not a single person. And now the corporate body is the responsibility to come together as one, one body, one spirit, one family, one body, one Together we move on. Together, together we shake cities. Together we bring people out of darkness and into light. Together we are unified. Together we are strong. Together we are filled with the fullness of the Godhead body. To the boy Jesus. The boy Jesus decided to I'm going to be about my father's business. I'm not concerned about my mother's business. Over the father that God has given to me to walk over me and put my own purpose in me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Neighbor, what's your neighbor say? Neighbor, I'm getting mine. If you don't want yours, I'll get yours too. You know I'm trying to save you. I can do that for you. What's that for you? What's that for you? The boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem and his parents were unaware of it. His place to be in the care of that one of day he's journey and became looking for him among the relatives and the courtiers and the acquaintances and the 45 says, and when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem looking for him. And it came about after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. He wasn't doing anything sinful. He was doing what was in his heart to do, but he was out of synchronization with God's timing for his life. You think I'm lying here? If I'm lying, then why did Jesus wait till he was 30 to go get baptized by God, at which point God speaks to him as Father validates him, and then he goes into ministry? I'm going to preach this whether you give me an amen or not. On this 4th of July week, there's going to be some fireworks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to have this 4th of July week, brother. I can tell you, it's a perfect time. It's a perfect time to be a failure. 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 Oh, my God. 
like, you can't tell you, I gotta get to these three points. My wife told me about my three points, I gotta get to them. I do, I do, I do, I really do, they're important. The thing about after three days, they found him in the temple. So he's just been saying he's asked the question. All who heard was 47. All who heard him were amazed. His understanding and his answers. And when they saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated of us in this way? I'm not the feeling sometimes, but I'm not to the Son, why did you think of us this way? Behold, your father and I have been anxious with fear and panic, looking for you. And he said to them, Why is it that you were looking for me? Did you know that I had to be in my father's business? But they did not understand the thing that was in the middle of them. So now watch this. The fact that Jesus was born was that Jesus was out of time. Watch this quickly. And they did not understand the statement which he had made to them. Verse 51 says that he went down with them. What did he do? With who? With them. And he came to Nazareth and he continued in subjection to them. And his mother treasured all these things in her heart, and Jesus watched us. Come on, you do Are you ready? Are you ready? I need to tell you, so let's say a prophet can have a pastor. Are you sure? No, I know that's the one that's coming. I'm going to go to the house. Yeah, I'm just going to ask you a time first, so we'll do my mind. And he went down with them and he came to Nazareth and he continued in subjection to them. That's this. The subjection to them caused three things that made him ready for the greatest ministry the world would ever see. The subjection to his parents caused this. And Jesus kept in reaching. Wait a minute, Jesus, he can't increase, he's already God. He's also all man. He had to increase. Okay, you know, I know that I just said a little bit of a little bit You know, the first person I went to, he must increase and I must decrease. Let me submit to you, but let me whip that scripture around and say, I must decrease so he may increase. We have just fallen into a greatest form of self deception that we can ever rest in. Because now what we're doing is we are using ourselves to measure ourselves against him. Thinking that if I decrease, he can increase in my life, I become the measuring rod for what I think will be success in order for me to gain his approval. Many of you think the more that I decrease, the more he's going to approve of me, not understanding that if you just learn that if he increases in your life, decreasing in your life is automatic. <laughs> Jesus was increasing. Why? Because he was submitted in this household. Increasing comes by submission to the household. Increasing does not come by being outside with Mr. Rock and make some money. I'm not talking about money, honey. That's just a part of it. I'm talking about are you going in wisdom and stature and in favor? Protecting facing. 
We are fought up to battle, healing the finances, leaving God to break through month after month, month after month, month after month. His God's will for increase, His God's will for favor, His God's will for Jesus. I wish I could have things that would be in health. Please I examine what is the condition of my soul. I bounce myself on Jerry. Every day when I get on a question for anybody ever heard of a question for we don't believe we have to be blessed anymore because we got a sound promise today. So we're already perfect and there's nothing else that can be done. So we're walking around and we're all jacked up, but we're philosophical and we're intellectual, but we're not anointed and we're not revelators. philosophy. <laughs> I promise you, there's a witch that comes to the church. God has to come in again. You know how it's going to be. You know what I'm going to do. Hey, look at her. I'm going to die. So Jesus submitted, and his submission cost him to go to three places. Number one, so wisdom. Wisdom is the what? Principal thing. 
But do you know wisdom is the hardest thing to define in your dictionary as far as I'm concerned? Why? Because wisdom pertains to every single thing of every man made philosophy. Philosophy is the level of wisdom. You have degrees of philosophy in everything you have to out of. That means there are areas of wisdom or expertise in everything that man has ever created. You have wisdom in medicine. You have wisdom in arithmetic. You have wisdom in finances. You have wisdom in different careers. You have wisdom in so many different areas that you know how to operate a business, not because you have knowledge, but you can rightly apply knowledge. You know when and when not to make decisions. You know when to step forward. You know when to step back. You know when to say this and when not to say that. So God, I'm still working on that one. Now, sometimes I'm like you, and I still pull out my sword and cut off an ear. But believe me, I'll, I will pray for your ear when I get done. So if your ears are bleeding, just a little bit of faith. Pastor Shane, ah, you heard me better. God's still working on them. Don't make me go with you. Just hang with me. Just hang with me. Just hang with me. He's a great guy, seriously. If I've ever gone through something, I want to do I want to do. I'd be honest with you. Some of y'all may not like him. Just because he's encouraging you. I'm going to let you know. I'm going to tell you this. 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 I want to be more like Paul. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. So you got to go with wisdom. Well, what is wisdom? You know what I mean? Years ago, I've been out studying wisdom. I'm like, oh, no, not my head around like wisdom. You know why? Wisdom is not intellectual. Wisdom is a metaphysical reality. People who don't believe in God, they don't believe in wisdom. Because wisdom is not something you can authentically wrap with a definition. You cannot define wisdom. Wisdom by the definition that God gave me. And you won't find this in Webster. But if you want this, you might want to write it down. God says, son, wisdom is pure and undefiled right. Jesus, wisdom is pure and undefiled right. It is a principle thing. So, in other words, it's the first thing. It's first in range. It's first in order. Wisdom comes before everything else. So, no, but I love that. No, it doesn't. Because I love that the peace of this world, and it's not the love of God. Wisdom is the principle thing. Because in getting wisdom, in all things to understand it. Why? Because when you have wisdom, and you begin to obtain a Understanding, then you may know what is the height, the depth, the width, and the depth. The love of God is passing the whole understanding. How many of you ever walked with the Lord that ten years ago? How many of you can also say I love you more today than when I met him? I can say that. Why? Because I'm going to know him. I love him because he loved me. So we don't love him first. We love him because he first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. Am I right? Come on. Pour off of me a little bit. Can I tell you this? Can I encourage you? You know, I read a priest there than anywhere. Because he got four. And I can get some places I want to go. God. Then we got one over there and try to hear you. We have a shot of who's here, please. I know, I know, I know, we're, we're, we're waiting for my guys. Tomorrow's going to come for us. She's gone, country. Look at him, dude. Anyway, we have been some chat with you. I'll tell you what. I saw him with a white guy. And that was it. Well, hello, everybody. It's so good to be here on this morning. Yeah. Here we go. This one is the preeminent. This one is the preeminent. Wisdom is the principle of the thing. Wisdom is the ability to walk between and the front line. In God, there is no darkness nor shadow of 
I'm just kidding. Let me say, Pastor is kidding. Thank you. Growing in stature means you're growing in height. Now, watch this. That means the med bond has to be increased before you're able to reach into favor. Stay where you're at, and I'm just going to leave it to you for the sake of time. Go somewhat further about our authority. This is the part. Let me say authority is a structure. Authority is a structure. We don't all have the same level of authority. We don't all have the same calling. We're not all on the same level. We're not all called fivefold. We're not all called to that priestly role of the new covenant. Sorry, the message is theology. But even if I should boast so much favor upon our authority, which the Lord gave for building you up. Too many churches came to be alone. God took them, God empowered them, God giving them the tools necessary to succeed in life, God giving them the resources, God's going to take them over and put them into the next dimension. That's exponential, it's exponential anything. It's exponential favor of God. Time is going to speed up. Do you hear me? Time is about to speed up in the next 18 months. What I mean is when you're older, Pastor. I mean, what would it take in you years is going to happen quickly? See, right now I can be ruled by the physical limitations of what I see around me. Or I can hear the Holy Spirit and I can prophesy the destiny of our East Coast. And I can prophesy the destiny of your life. And I can prophesy to those who are connected to us, who have served with us, who believe that God is joining you to us. Who has been faithful to the music. Who has been faithful in the power. I'm telling you, I can tell you that God is about to expedite the things you have asked for. He's about to expedite. Yes, indeed, it won't be long now, God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast, your head will swing up. Oh, yeah. One thing fast on the heels of the other. We won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. And everywhere you look, blessings, blessings.
God just told me that there's some things you're asking him for and hoping for, and God said it's not going to happen to you. Let go of some other things that has told you in the past. You know this, but the Lord wants me to remind you, it's still a walk of faith. Remember that camel joke? You think the Lord, I know you're going to think about that too. You're growing a factory. The measure in which Paul was walking in was supporting people up and not destroying them. And because of that, Paul said, I will not be put to shame. Wow. You're building people up with the measure that's been given to you. You will not want to be put to shame. For we are not bold to pass or compare ourselves to some of those who commend themselves. But when they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves to themselves, they are without an attendant. (laughs) 
But we will not boast beyond our measure. But within the measure of the fear which God apportioned to us as a measure to reach even as far as you. Which means the more I reach and the more you reach, the more I reach. I reach, to reach, we reach, I reach. We all reach. That's why I can't expect a 10 month church plan to look like a 10 year church plan. For what we got in the city is a bunch of 10 year church plans that don't look anything like this 10 month church plan. But we are not overstanding ourselves as if we did not reach to you. So we were the first to come to you as far as we can gospel Christ. So we're not boasting in a measure that is not ours. We're not boasting in our own measure that is in another man's favor. But with a hope that is your faith, as your faith grows, we shall be within our sphere in large even more by you. So as I preach the gospel, you need to believe just beyond you. And to say it's going to be traveling a little bit more. Are you hearing me? I'll be married in September. I need, I need to be somewhere in July and I need to be somewhere in August. But I'm, I'll be married in September. You be praying that uh, God opens more doors, that the reach that my stature will continue to grow. Because watch this, as my stature grows, the favor on my life will grow. I'm not going to say or claim I got all the favor. I'm a work in progress just like you, but I got it. I've got a level of favor on my life. And that level of favor is due to the level of stature that I'm working with. That's due to the level of wisdom, the light that I'm working Favor, 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 speaking of favor, speaking of favor, speaking of favor. Do you know that you're going to be the same total of the top people that you identify with? You are going to be the same total of the top people that you associate with. So, you look at the five places people to you, and you know who you are, and you know where you're going to be in the future. Wake up. Wake up, call. That's how we know these people. I'm going to know the Bible. It's a serious application. I'm going to know the And then, I saw them in the five, I have to be in the The five that continues or begins to discover my stature and increases my stature into my favor has to be people that are not my associates in my bodies. It's helping you. But cannot be associates and not the people I'm speaking into who are my buddies. They may be a man of 
So we had more ministry of success than we did. We cast out more demons than our body. We see more souls moving than our skin. And you hear me? They carry more weight on their voice than I carry. You think I'm going to submit to a bishop that doesn't have any weight on his voice? We don't let the anointing in Jerusalem and he's somewhere in Nazareth? This is a very old thing. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, yes, yes. The Lord is just in order. I honor you, Mr. So God bless you. You know what? I have to connect the people that are better than I am. When I say better, I'm not saying that God makes that person better than you. What I'm talking about is what you have achieved and arrived at in the level of success in which God has called you. And so I got to make sure that we surround ourselves with people that's able to take you and bring you into where you need to be. So it's really to become what's in this house. If I cast out demons, we're going to cast out demons. If I heal the sick, you're going to heal the sick. If I prophesy, you know you're going to prophesy. You know you're going I thought with somebody, he's saying, I'm with somebody. He was giving a rub up on jazz and then he was giving a rub up on jazz and then he was giving a rub up on jazz and then he was giving a rub up on jazz and then he was giving a rub up on jazz and then he was giving a rub up on jazz and then you lean toward, that's the definition, you can look at it on it. You lean toward, in other words, when you're favor on you, something leans towards you. Which way is it tipping towards me? You know what tipping point is? It's when you are standing in statue, and you're going to tip one way or the other. I used to be alive with a pretty chainsaw. We had a great taste. And I used to pick them up again. I thought I'd tell them where to fall. And you'd go in a certain direction. And they'd say, well, I fall on something. You know, it's going to hurt something. And they'd keep back to the tree. So you had to throw that tree. And that tree had to have a tipping point. You created that tipping point by the way you cut into the tree. So when you allow God to come into you in the season, it's the way you're going to tip. Are you going to tip in the favor, or are you going to tip back into your past? Are you tipping into the new relationships, or are you going to tip back into the old relationships? That God is trying to cut. God is trying to cut them out of your life, but with the right magnets, they keep coming to you. They keep trying to drive you back down. They can't see so, thank you. So, it's anonymous. It's a blessing. The blessing of the Lord makes a blessing and he has no power to it. So, the moment the blessing comes upon your life, I'm not going to get far for it. I just bought this car. How much did it pay me? When God really blessed me with how much did it pay me? When God blessed me with how much did it pay me? What is $700? God blessed you with no, no, no. 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 I got one phone. I'm not going to do it. 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 I'm I'm not going to 